What's up, StarCraft fans? Today we're doing the tier list for Fire in the Hole on Minor Evac. Brian, let's hear the mutation. Minor Evac is the map where we have to fight our way to the Evac ships and defend them from the infested as they launch. We have to successfully defend five ships to win. On brutal difficulty, we lose the game if we lose more than one ship. Boom bots spawn from enemy buildings. They detonate nukes when they touch your stuff and can't be attacked. They can only be defused by entering a code that only one player can see and only the other player can enter. All Missiles right. fly in from the sides of the map to your buildings. These can be shot down but will deal damage otherwise so we have two two and evil in the call for today how are you guys all right all right all right nice i wasn't expecting to be able to do the, the tier list today but hey here we are so two two how will we rank the commanders this week well it's boom box which means that uh full clearing will be very good so commanders that can clear the map easily will get points commanders who can give vision to see the boom box also great and uh missile command it's standard missile command stuff so <laughs> for the most part the boom bots like uh if your ally's not cooperative it doesn't matter who you are you're gonna die so <laughs> Kind of. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, how about you, Evil Link? Yeah, if you full clear, then boom bots become a non issue. Then it's mostly can you survive missile command? Um, because this is a semi timed mission, you're going to be encountering nukes and PDDs. So, if you cannot deal with PDDs and nukes, aka you don't have hit scan, you're going to have a little hard time just, just trying to survive toward the end of the mission. And for those of you who are not really versed to starcraft terminology hit scan means when you shoot the projectile goes directly from the shooter to the target there is no missile actually being projected on the screen to be intercepted the 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 reason why hit scan is pretty good is because later on in the game point defense droids will intercept your projectiles that try to shoot down the missiles if you have hit scan the Point defense drones will not be able to intercept them. They go straight for the missiles. Let's begin. Abather, where do we have him? He's really good at clearing. He also can d disable toxic nests so that you can see boom bots um, easily. His only issue is the first brutalist. But even like normally, you want thing you want enemies to be at the at the eastern, the one east of the natural, the the ship. But if there are no enemies there, you still have enough uh, biomass around the begin, like the center plus the left side to get a Brutalist. And I guess even if you don't have a Brutalist, you won't necessarily die because it's just standard minor evac. The enemies aren't stronger. So once you get your Brutalist, you can start clearing and you can even reach like far areas to clear. So I put him in A. How about you, Eveling? I have Abathur from B to C. Uh, he has some forms of hit scan but he still kind of struggles with it so his hit scan is or i wouldn't say hit scan more like ways of dealing with pdds and the best way is the symbiotes of the brutalist or any ultimate evolution they output so much they overwhelm the pdds so usually later on in the mission when the nukes start coming out with their pdds you just if you have three brutalists just deep tunnel it to the path of the nuke and it pretty much will overwhelm it and they'll be able to kill the nuke within maybe about two or three seconds um other ways you can deal with it uh if you are gutsy enough for it uh ravagers are a way of doing it their bios will not be stopped by pdds but to hit a nuke with the bios is not easy um the other way is just sheer overwhelming the pdds which is uh, if you do p2 swarm hosts they just output so much that it's you're you're gonna actually pad your kill count significantly just due to the sheer amount of things that the swarm hosts are just randomly shooting at which includes missiles pds and <laughs> the actual mission stuff itself um definitely as tutu said try to get your get vision around the map by deep tunneling a uh, brutalist into uh, different parts where there's still buildings and get a toxic nest down disable it so that you can maintain vision because having that early vision is very major for kill bots uh, where it gives you and your ally boom time bots. to uh, sorry not kill bots yeah boom bots gives you and your ally time to communicate the messages 
Um, voice chat, that's one of the best ways to deal with it. Um, the other way, if you are not adept at typing out the codes, uh, if you and your ally are okay with it, you can pause and then it gives you time to type out the codes and unpause. And it uh, prolongs the mission, but it's a more solid way to get it done if you're not a voice chat. Well, once like the mission is started, he doesn't really have uh, any problems and he's not bad on this map against against nukes you basically by the time nukes come you probably should have full cleared especially if you have someone helping you and uh if you're not if not you're pretty close so your brutalists can just go on full-time nuke duty while uh you just just like with void rifts you have them on like different hotkeys and you just deep tunnel to the brute the, the nuke and then kill it i think the brutalist can also just slap it from underneath so i've never found nukes to be a problem and you have mend and you can and have lot you have lots of minerals so you just mask evil evils evolution chambers or spores and yeah because you're not going to mass roaches i don't i've never found him to be like trouble he doesn't have much trouble against missile command mm, okay what do you think evil link yeah yeah i agree with that it's just um yeah i'm not opposed to putting avatar into a it's just i have him from b to c just mostly looking at the other commanders that are like really do well against missile command so that's yeah well, uh, i mean i can be convinced toward, toward a real easily so uh so again for for this mutation for boom bots if you are not using voice chat whatever your commander's tier or ranking is just drop it one it's pretty much like one rank lower because <laughs> you have to type and that makes it harder that makes sense uh yeah and also i think abather like in addition to not to being pretty good against missile command his toxic nesting allows him to uh see boom bots and also for for like commanders, any commander actually, if you if your ally's not defusing blue bot, you can patrol a worker around it, and you can still F two. Yeah. That. So if you if you patrol a worker, you can stall it indefinitely. Yeah. Just don't run units past them. Or an overlord that works too for Abathur. But anyway, so uh, we need someone to agree to someone else. Are we putting Abathur in A or B? Um, I'm okay with A. If Tutu is insisting on A, I'll, I'll I'll go with that. It's not a not an issue for me. All right, so we'll put Abathur in A for now. Prestige wise, anything except the third or the first one, right? Mm, yeah. Okay. I I guess uh oh, also because it's this map. Like if you lose the first ship, you actually like you you don't lose the game. So you and then you have lots of time to build up. So Plenty even if you don't get your first brutalist and you lose the first ship, you're, the game's not over. Yes. So. Like, you don't have to rush a Brutalist. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Alarak, where do we have him? Alarak, I have from A to B. Prestige 3, that's a lot of hit scan. So, and he's, P3 is very well known for uh, full clears of quick, very quick full clears. That's not going to be an issue. So, he can take boom bots out uh, very quickly. Okay. How about you, Tutu? Uh... P3, so you patrol destroyers to stop the missiles. You Otherwise, you can't, like, nothing else really hits them uh, once the PDDs come. Then he'll clear the map really quickly. Alarak himself can stand at a ship, and he will be good enough for, like, the first two. Yeah. So I, he's really strong. Uh, he doesn't have anything that's good against Boombots, like, to get vision early on. Except, well, Mothership is really fast, so you can kind of get close and then see the, see the number and then, like, fly away before you get blown up. Yeah, So, yeah, I put Alarak in A. Okay, so both of you kind of agree with A. Let's put him in A. And also, I assume that all of us agree that Alarak for most mutations has one prestige which is shadow of death the one with the mothership right that yeah. applies to this one as well okay so that's pretty good i yeah i want to add if you're trying to get vision there's a quite a bit of parts in minor evacuation that has dead space send out um war prisms and siege them up now that's that'll pretty good put some vision around that is pretty good yeah okay let's move on arcturus where do we have him? a lot of hit scan against the missiles so he's good if you take over the center your esls get vision of the boom bots while clearing stuff around the map and you can drop troopers in like the top right to clear that area once uh like you know no boom bots are there yeah. and once the boom bots are gone it's just a simple debunker defense at each ship so hey. very simple very simple hey how about you, Evelyn? Yeah, for me, Octurus I have from S to A. Uh, pretty much, this is 
Um, other than boom bots, this is a trivial, <clears throat> trivial mission for him. Pretty Any trivial. Any prestige would, would, yeah, would could 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 accomplish it. Any prestige. You know what? Yeah, let's let's call it that. Any prestige could work. Let's put him in A. So, uh, yeah, any prestige will work. But isn't the third prestige like slightly better because you have cheaper weapons? No. No, not really. All right number, then. Number one with with the. Uh, uh, contaminated strike can stop waves like and also if you're having a, a little hard time defending you drop a contaminated strike, a strike over and over again on the area that you're defending so that each, of, help. each of them has their own strength in in their own way that's true that will help plus the contaminated strike is not limited by the rage of earth splitter you can shoot it at the opposite end of the map and it will still shoot that's pretty good okay let's put him in a artanis where do we have him Okay, so you mentioned three A so far. Artanis, I have from DDE, can easily be con convinced to F. Uh, his he is notoriously bad for hit scan, so he's gonna struggle with missile command. The only saving grace he has is like if a nuke is about to hit, you can pop a shield overcharge and mitigate a lot of that. But uh, in terms of boom bots. He can he can get vision. Observer is good, um, but yeah, DDE uh, any prestige is going to so um, yeah, pick your poison, whatever. It, it all it's all not good. It's all bad. <laughs> okay, how about you, Tutu? Uh, for missiles, like one thing you can do is you make the high templar, two high templar, storm the PDDs, and then you can like your dragoons that are there if they're still alive can finish off the missile, or you can storm the missile. That's how I usually deal with them, at least. Yeah, that's uh, what for you blue did. <laughs> Same. Yeah, for boom bots, you siege observers in various parts of the map that's to get vision, but that's as much as he can do. And yeah. I guess his clearing is also not very fast. So, and his and he's also not that great on this mutation. Like, not mutation. He's on not that map. great on this map. That's he's, true. Yeah, he's not. He's not the worst on this map, but he's not that good. And if you're spending money defending missile command or like rebuilding pylons, you're gonna have less to defend the ships. I put him in E. All right, so both of you had him in E. Let's put him in E. Prestige wise, it's kind of up to you guys. If you think if you think you want to play Artanis here, you've been warned, so you probably won't listen to our advice on prestige anyway. Just do what you want. Let's move on. Dahaka, where do we have him? Dahaka is bad against missile command, but otherwise he's. Fine. So with an ally, yeah, he's actually not that bad. He's you might have to rebuild bad. some heat. You might have to rebuild buildings like I your did. gas. <laughs> I did. But then, yeah, and uh, as long as you surround your base with creeper hosts, you can take out missiles, and you don't have to worry about the nukes. And later on, you can use the greater primal worms, summit right under the nuke, and use the ability. laser thing. It will bypass the PDDs and then destroy the nuke uh, immediately. Then you can like deep tunnel the greater primal worm to where you're fighting or back at home for some more defense. Uh, for boom bots, you can summon a greater primal worm to see, or you can just like uh, send Patrol some locusts drone. in that direction. That works too. And, and if you're making creeper hosts as, anyways, you can send some in the direction to clear an area, or you can use pack leaders. He's pretty good at that. But since he's not that good against missile command, I put him in C. He does okay. his job. Okay, how about you, Evelyn? Yeah, I have pretty much auto points that Tutu made. The Haka from B to C. Use pack leaders. Um, he could. I mean, he's not gonna be great at this. So, I mean, have fun with it. Use any prestige. Maybe give P1, P1 a a, a, drive, a drive since that we rarely get to recommend it. Yeah. Uh, use your pack leaders to clear as quick as possible, so you can eliminate boom bots from the equation, and therefore just worry about missile command with the recommendations that Tutu said for dealing with the nukes. Kind of went for a different strategy here when I played the Haka. Of course, I had Tutu as an ally, but what I did as the Haka is just kind of end the map as fast as possible. So essentially, a, a quasi speedrun kind of solution, where I just my solution to the missiles is to end the game before they become too great. So it's not necessarily better, but if you have an ally who can keep you alive until then, it might be worth considering. But anyway, I also put him in C, so it's unanimous. But to put him in C. Prestige wise, yeah, you can use anything you want, I think. I think actually, I did use the second prestige. I still think it's slightly stronger, but you won't go wrong with any one of them. Let's move on. Phoenix, where do we have him? Phoenix, another commander that's pretty bad at dealing with missile command. The only truly effective way to dealing with nukes is 
the Phoenix Dragoon suit. That <laughs> will not be the solar flare will not be stopped by by the point defense drones. So everything else, you're just going to have to build adepts, build conservators. Uh, scouts, <laughs> uh, conservators. Conservators are actually a way of dealing with it. Like, yeah. you want to be making mass conservators. <laughs> that it could be if you, I mean, they're a gateway unit. And if you have pylons right around in most places, if you see a nuke incoming, just warp in a b- bunch of conservators and have it go after the, it down. the nuke. So that is the way. Just taser down the and nuke. And then the, the, the other uh, one unit that does have hit scan, Colarion. So his beam oh, yeah. attack doesn't get stopped by That's the point true. defense drone. So, um, but I have him from C to D. You C can D. go with any, any one of them as long as you have Dragoon Suit, which is going to be your most effective way of going after nukes that might be in uh coming in odd, odd directions okay how about you Tutu? Hmm. i already put uh, i originally put him in b but i don't think i actually don't think he's that good against missile command but uh the haka's miss problem is the early game missile command whereas phoenix's problem is the late game missile command uh early game he just takes hits like he's fine <laughs> He's you can fine. spread adepts or something. Walk and, it off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, this is fine. Phoenix has tons of buildings, so the damage will get spread naturally. Uh, mm-hmm. You can actually have an auto auto defense with uh, mass carriers. Like if you put like six carriers, even P two carriers, I think that's should, like six at each base. You should be able to defend it more in the main because you have more buildings there. Uh, and then his clearing ability. Uh, if you're using P two, you can clear safely safe-ish kind of safely because if Caldalis gets blown up by Boombot you don't really care uh, yeah I put him in B but I don't have a problem with C okay then we'll put him in C prestige wise second one's still better right yeah I think second one's just the best prestige yeah I, I agree Hot and Horner where do we have him Hot and Horner they 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 can play uh play like it's dead of night where they uh use strike fighters on the buildings the huts yes. and you can clear the far ones like that han and horner also isn't that bad on this map because they have hellbats han, their problem is missile command which they're terran so they can repair they have carrier gallons which is fine but nukes you need to fight nukes effectively you want like 12 to 15 reapers at each base and like when a nuke comes close you you uh fly you lift them up the ground and then shoot down the nukes and but you have to like pay attention and you have to pay attention to like the direction they're coming from and you cannot f2 which is kind of annoying kind if of you're sad. used to playing f2 with han horner i put them in b okay that's not bad how about eviling wow b i that's pretty generous in my opinion i have han and horner from c to d but to deal with nukes, all I for me, I make a pair of Vikings, DMOS Vikings. One <clears throat> one set of wild missiles is enough to kill a nuke. So you teleport. Um, if your Vikings are in place, then all you have to do is take off auto casts of your wild missiles. Click on the nuke, the nuke, cast the wild missiles, and it's gone. It's gone. And as soon as all the missiles connect, it's it, that nuke is going to be gone, regardless of the point defense drones. It bypasses it completely. You can use Reapers um, if if you don't have the Vikings around, but uh, for minor evacuation, the DMS Vikings are pretty good with their shredder rounds. So yes. I I'm okay with putting a B, but I'm just from experience on miss with missile command on previous mutations on an order kind of struggles with it with it because once the missiles start getting a little out of hand you really need to just try to overwhelm them with um, missile turrets widow mines and things like that to just reduce the amount of damage that's incoming to your base you do float a lot of minerals with Hana Horner, so yeah uh, just just surround it with overlapping layers of missile turrets. I recommend P2 for this just because the MS Vikings are pretty good against the, the way to go for dealing with nukes. Nukes, okay. But I can be convinced to be, but uh, right now my my niche shows C to D. Hmm. Okay, Tutu, why B instead of C? You're saying Hot and Horner is a whole tier above v- the above Phoenix and the Haka. Well, they're Terran. 
So they have repair. That's one. They're Terran, so they get to repair. Second is the the Viking strategy. I tried it before. It's very finicky because like if you because you know how hard it is to click the nuke sometimes. So yes. if you miss the click, it sometimes like the Viking will just keep chasing it but never start shooting because you you missed it. If you whereas with the Reaper thing, because Reapers are hit scan, right? So you just fly and then you shoot them and like you shoot down all the PDDs in immediately and then shoot down the missile like really fast. Uh, I think P1 is better because with P1, you have one galleon at each base and then you have three on the field because you still need to do the mission. So you have three on the field with uh, dropping Hellbats, Hellions, and Reapers. And that's like, yeah. So you don't need the Vikings. And you can add them to your army later. Uh, also, I guess strike fighters help with the boom bots. So you, if you're not, uh, if you're flying overhead, like you can kind of see the boom bot and the flames also provide vision for a bit. That's true. So I found that to be useful. Are you convinced, Eveling? No, I'm okay with putting in the B. I mean, I have a special place in my heart for Han and Hoarder. So uh, Terran is that's that's enough of a justification for me to to go down to B. Um, just regarding the Vikings, so you're not trying to shoot the nukes with the Viking auto attack. Uh, you need to treat the Viking as a caster. Like a corruptor. Against the Step nukes. by corruptor. And, yeah. Not, well, if you're looking to put the corruption on. But yeah, you have to treat it in that sense. Once you see the missiles start going, you can just, you can walk away because you know those all those missiles are going to connect against uh, the nuke. Hmm. So yeah, B is fine. Okay, let's put them in B. Prestige-wise, if you want to use Vikings, you can use the second prestige. Otherwise, you can stick to the first one. Let's move on. Karax, where do we have him? Carax, he does have pretty effective ways of dealing with point defense drones. One is Kaidaran monoliths, their hit scan. The other one is your space lasers. They are definitely, they will not be stopped. So They will not be stopped. P not by the U P3. or the Protoss or anyone. They will rule the sector or see it burnt to ashes around them. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Continue. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Carax, pretty much if you see a new coming in, you're gonna, as long as you have Spiridoon energy, you have a way to uh, bring down the nuke uh, globally. So, uh, I, right now I have him from B to C, but I can be convinced to, to A for Carax. A? Okay. Or B, C, but so A to C. Anywhere from A to C. Okay. Yeah, A to C. How about you, T2? Carax? He's good against Missile Command, and he's good on this map. So that's two out of the three things. The the uh, boom bots, he's not that great, but he does have observers. He's also not that good at clearing, but uh, I guess he's so good at the Missile Command that you can defend for your ally. And if your ally is not Zerg, you also auto-repair for them. It's so true. that yeah. gives them time to focus more on clearing if, if that's what they're better at. So I put Karax in A. Okay, so mm -hmm. A seems fine. Let's put him in A. Prestige-wise, yep. do we want the third one or the first one? Not the first one. <laughs> Not I, the first one. Okay, so the third one. Would, yeah, third yeah. one's going to be better. Okay. So Karax A, use Solarite Celestial. Kerrigan, where do we have him? Kerrigan. Kerrigan is not that great against Missile Command because... Uh, she well her usual strategy is just dumping omega worms which is actually in line with what you want to do against the boom bots yes she does clear pretty quickly so that's good and uh hopefully with her mobility you'll be able to clear the map before the before the nukes come then you can focus solely on the nukes so you just like pop out of a worm and fight, kill the nuke and then continue putting omega worms everywhere uh, it's a lot of work, though. So I put Kerrigan in B. B. How about you, Evelyn? Kerrigan is notoriously bad for having hit scan, so she's not that great about against missile command. But yeah, if you have a bunch of Omega Worms around, that helps mitigate it a lot. So I have Kerrigan from C to D. C to D. She has wow. very good ways to defend against the mission. Lurkers are a great way to defend against it. But yeah, Missile Command is a problem for her. Uh, if she starts, if she doesn't have enough things around, if you're not good with um, just making a bunch of Omega Worms, you're you're gonna start losing stuff. And 
all of her stuff gets stopped. Um, queens, Hydras, Mutalisks. Uh, the only thing that doesn't get stopped by the point defense drones is Kerrigan herself. She, I would argue she's enough. But uh, what do you think? You, uh, what do you think, Tutu? C? D? I, I actually think, uh, I'm surprised Eveling didn't, of all people, didn't mention this, that P1 is really good against Missile Command. I didn't mention it because you don't, you, you don't get Omega Worms, which are kind of yeah. good against the Boombots. But um, P1 is really good against Missile Command because you just patrol Hydras and your hydras will shoot your hydras with their extra attack speed and stuff will bypass all the pdds and kill the missiles before they get close the nukes and then you just dump lurkers at uh, with you have a queen or you just fly overlords I, I flew overlords this time and then you just cover the the ship area with creep and you have like 10 lurkers and nothing gets fast because the creep okay so what do you think evilly uh just uh i so every time i do this tier list i prep something and i do recommend p1 for kerrigan i just didn't mention it but <laughs> yeah uh, but the thing is, the with the boombots having so I I I didn't mention it because in the back of my mind when you mention Omega Worms, yeah, it helps to buffer it and it also helps to create delay tactics against boombots if you need it if for any reason. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little little torn with it, but uh, I guess kind of looking through the rest of the tier list, I would be okay with Kerrigan being in C to D because I kind of feel she's somewhere in the, somewhere the Hakka Phoenix level. But D, I yeah, I'm not too sure about that. I I think I would need more more convincing for that because we're comparing comparing them to Han and Horn or, and. Again, Terran can repair Kerrigan. She has queens, but we all know how clunky that is to rely on the, on queens for repair. Especially when you do make a fresh queen, they don't have enough energy for a transfuse. That's true. Okay, uh, Tutu, uh, are you gonna convince Eveling? Well, I don't. I don't think Kerrigan is as bad as like Dehaka and Phoenix. Sure. Her her plan normally for late game missile command is you have dummy omegas everywhere and if they get nuked so what so you pretty much only go after the nukes that are at that are going towards your base and if you know that they're going towards like a, like a dummy omega on the right side or something you just leave it alone you don't even care about it or like the left side because since your natural is in the center you can kind of tell if it's going towards the center or not and if it's going towards your base then you go after it and Kerrigan's army is not especially on this map the enemies aren't stronger so if you have lurkers or ultralisk or something then you can actually just leave your the ship alone for a bit and then kerrigan can go i i actually didn't have her hire because she's it's a lot of work i i didn't put mm -hmm. yeah i thought she would be she's not bad on this map and not bad against boombots or and clearing but essentially you're saying that kerrigan can just go to wherever the nuke is if it is heading her way or her allies way and just kind of leave her units to deal with the enemies of the ship because it's not stronger anyway. Yeah. Okay, is that compelling enough, Eveline? Well, I one thing I'm catching is saying that Kerrigan is a lot of work. And um, you got to do a lot of work with her on top of Boombots when you have to be uh, looking to see where... They're coming in from and communicate the code to your ally. So, mm. so you, you shouldn't, because Kerrigan is so good at clearing that you should clear before 15, by even by herself, right? That's so That's so fair. by the time nukes come, you should have, there should be no more boombots. So in the beginning, okay. yeah, in the beginning when there are boombots, then there's only like one at a time for the first like 10 minutes. Okay, okay. We'll put Kerrigan in B then. Okay, Kerrigan in B. So do you recommend the third prestige here or do you want the first prestige uh let's be for, let's go p1 fine. to be spicy anyone is fine but you can go the this, first prestige if you want creep yeah, defense so, so so the p1 is better against missile command and p0 p2 p3 is better against boom bots and clearing so it depends what you want yeah i guess if you're in a party you can mm. kind of see what your ally is good at and then base your prestige That's choice fair on what your ally is going for or what strategy you're going for in general. Uh, so we're ending up, we're ending up uh, putting Kerrigan in B and again, prestige, you have to see what you're good at and what your ally is good at. If you're going for the 
third prestige or no prestige you want to clear very quickly so that you won't have to ping pong around dealing with boom bots when you're also dealing with nukes and if you're going for the first prestige you just want to have hydralisks defending your base so that they can shoot down the missiles okay let's move on nova where do we have them Nova, she has a lot of tools to deal with many different parts of this mission. Uh, she in herself is just Nova is good at minor evacuation. Her siege tanks with the spider mines, uh, like two siege tanks can ho almost hold hold a ship on her own, especially the earlier ones. Uh, I have her from A to B. I would recommend any prestige that you can make it work it, either way. If you go with P1, you're going to always have charges of Marines to uh, deal with uh, the nukes. And pretty much this is minor evacuation. None of, the, none of the enemies are buffed in any way, so it's easy for her to deal with. And even if you do P1 infantry, you still that doesn't mean you cannot still make tanks and liberators. Uh, those are still great to have. And if you go with P3, uh, you can dedicate your army to defending the ships, send Nova out to go clear the clear clear all the buildings, and by yeah by about 15 minutes you should not have that many buildings. Unlike last week's mutation on part and parcel, <laughs> where there's a lot of buildings clear, so minor buildings. evacuation is very very few bu Relatively buildings compared bare. to that. So okay, yeah. So letter. I said A to B. A to B. How about you, Tutu? Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. She can, but she has tools against missile command. Not the best, but she has tools, good tools. She's a Terran commander. She's good on this map, and she can clear the map, uh, clear the buildings easily. So I put her in A. Okay. Uh, both of you agree with A. Let's put them in A. Prestige wise, we want the third one here. One or three. One Either or three. One is fine. Okay, it's that's a, good. Depends what you want. Yeah, okay, that works for me. Let's move on. Rainer, where do we have him? So Rainer, he has hit scan marines, good against missile command. He can scan for boom bots. That's good. He's also good on this map. Uh, P1, I think, is really good on this map. Uh, not everyone agrees, but I think P1 is great on this map. And uh, his clearing is not that good. Not 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 terrible, but uh, it's, it's kind of hard to clear. But uh, average. However, because, yeah, it's average. But the good thing is that he can scan. So it's like even if there are bots, you can just see them right as they spawn and then defuse them. Or drop them right. It's cheaper. A. Okay. A. How about you, Eveling? Yeah, I have Rainer A to B. A lot of uh, similar points to Nova. And he has drop pods. So when it gets to maybe about 10 to 11 minutes, try to have at least three barracks up with reactors. So that way you have a way to react to nukes if you, if you have an area that's not covered. You just po uh, point the rally point of your uh, reactor barracks and just drop a bunch of Marines and six Marines will definitely take out a nuke, no problem. He's very good at defending the ships. Again, drop pods. If you have a ship in an odd location, drop pods kind of negate that. So you can use your dust wings to clear out the area and then just safely drop tanks and drop marines and that maybe marauders and medics too. And that should be more than enough to defend the ships. Against boom bots, Rainer has a very good way of dealing with boom bots. As soon as you see the, the icon for the boom bot pop up, you scan it and you can see the code already and you can start typing it in. Okay. So, yeah, A to B. Okay, both of you agree with A. Let's put him in A. Stepboy, where do we have him? Stepman doesn't have great ways of dealing with, doesn't have great ways of hit scan, but he does have Igorb, which will pretty much annihilate a nuke, no problem. Okay, letter. Uh, I have Stepman from B to C. I recommend P3 because it's it's a it's a infested map. Yeah. So yeah, um, hungry hungry ultras Ultralisks. will be happy. Yes. And uh, satellites, they if you spread them out enough, they get will get vision for you and 
a lot to bots. deal with boom bots in a much easier way. Yes. How about you, Tutu? Uh, Satellites, great for vision. Super Gary clears map super quickly. Uh, he's against Missile Command. He's not great, but he's Terran. And he has several Desert. options against the nukes. He can use Corruptors. He can use Brute Lord Yamato. He can use uh, Igorbs. So what I usually do is, since you spread Satellites everywhere, you can easily fly to where the nukes are before they're even close to a building. And you can just like mm -hmm. shoot them. And uh, by the time, just like with Kerrigan, by the time nukes come, you should have cleared the map already. So yeah, uh, I suppose similar to Kerrigan in that sense. And your army will be similar to Kerrigan's as well. It's either Lurkers or Ultras. So I guess B. All right. So it's both of you had them in B. Let's put them in B. Prestige wise, you want the third one, right? Oil Baron. Um, uh, I think second is better because you want to clear faster. Okay, so use whichever one you want between second. First yeah. one is bad. The if you think you get more vision, yeah, don't use with, the first one. If you think you get more vision with the first prestige, you don't. You just get a larger stat zone, but the vision itself, the one you need for the boombots, is the same. So you don't need the first one. Let's move on. Stukov, where do we have him? Stukov has uh. Bunkers, so hit scan bunkers. He has tanks to to fight against the the infested. He's not great at clearing, but if you're using P3, he will eventually clear things. And if your dudes get blown up, it's not a big deal. Eventually. So yeah, I put him in A. Yeah, it was pretty easy when they played Stukov. How about you, Evelyn? P3 enjoyers rejoice. This <laughs> this will be your day. It so, was fun. Yeah, a, a to B. It was fun. Okay. Oh uh, wait. Uh, both of you said A, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's put him in A. Third prestige is fine. You can use that. Or if you want actual bunkers, you can also use no prestige. It'll also work. But it, it's kind of weaker in the long run. So just kind of choose whatever you want between the two. Don't pick the second one. It's just bad. I know it's not weaker. It's just bad. Let's move on. Swan, where do we have him? Swan, Terran. His uh, spinning dizzies take out missiles like uh, real easily. And if anything, you see the nuke, you use your laser drill and laser drill it down. Uh, not, ain't nothing going to stop that. Can do P1, P2. I mean, can do P3. This is this is going to be a trivial mission for a swan. So A to B. Okay. How about you, Tutu? Same thing. Just he's good against missile command. He's he has ways to get vision with hercs or back floating factories. He's good against the mutation. Oh, not mutation. The map. He's just not that good with clearing. He's average with clearing. Uh, so I put him in A. Okay. Both of you have an A. Let's put him in A. Yep. Prestige wise. Is there a, a, a clear-cut stronger one here, or do you just play to whichever style you prefer? I think it's whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, play to your style. If you are looking to clear, probably P2 will be better since you're going to have access to concentrated beam. And then if you know where uh, the building densities are, you can clear out quite a bit with just concentrated beam. Okay, so let's put him in A. Let's move on. Hykus, where do we have him? So this one, this map, uh, there are boom bots, but no polarity, which means that he can, he can clear all the buildings by himself. He doesn't need help. He's Terran. He has hit scan. He's good on this map. Good against the mutation. Uh, I feel like he clears the map so fast with P2 that it becomes like a standard m minor evacuation with missile tur auto turrets everywhere for missile command. I put him in S because I feel like your ally can do nothing but input numbers and you'll still win. Yeah. And even if your ally doesn't really input numbers, you can stall the boot bots with SCVs. So maybe that's a solo idea for this one, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, how about you, Eveling? So, Tychus, I have A to B, but easily convinced to S. He pretty much P2 will trivialize, trivialize this mission, trivialize missile command, and the clear so fast that boom bots are not a thing. So, mm. yeah, I'm okay with Tychus being S. Okay, so uh, I was actually going to say something about... Uh, having him in A. I personally had Tychus in A because, you know, I don't put anyone. But yeah, if Tychus can solo this as Tutu kind of demonstrated uh, orally, I think he can. Uh, he can actually be an S, even for my standards uh, of being able to solo this. So, uh, we all agree with S? 
Yes. All right. Okay, let's put him at S. There we go. Prestige wise, second prestige is still better, right? Uh, clears yes. faster. Uh, there yeah. may be there may be an uh, an argument for Dog Walker because you get an extra outlaw, quote unquote. But I think you still want to be able to fan out and destroy everything, and clear missiles along the way. So there we go. Vorazun, where do we have him? Vorazun, another commander that has good forms of hit scan. Uh, surprisingly, our corsairs and void rays are hit scan units. And typically for infested maps, it is suggested for Vorazin to go, yeah, Corsairs, Void Rays, Oracles, because, yeah, they're just air. They take a lot less damage. Yeah. Uh, if you have Dark Templar, they take damage from from the volatile infested. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, P3 allows you to pretty much as long as you're using a Shadow Guard off cooldown, it essentially you can clear... Um, two ship areas, if if lucky, or one and a half. Um, yeah, A to B. A to B. How about you, uh, Tutu? So for minor evacuation, normally Horizon uses the dark pylon wall, yeah, where you wall. put a dark pylon by the ship and you block off the edges with cannons so that the infested cannot get close to the ship at all. The detection on this map is really sparse, so you won't have to fight many detectors. And even if they come, you have lots of Corsairs, which, will, which you're making anyways. They will get rid of the detectors. And then your time stops will kill the building, destroy the the buildings probably by the fourth one if not the third not one. earlier yeah the only problem she has is she kind of doesn't really have a good way to get vision of boombots so mm. yeah and the wall thing is if you're like a little slow or if you're not sure how to build it or if, there, if there's a hole in the wall then there might be a problem so i put her in b okay but we have it in b so let's put her in b prestige wise vorzun again only has one prestige here and that is keeper of shadows by the way, one more thing about the Corsairs, they are hit scan, so they ignore point defense throws. That's what they're pretty good against nukes and every sort of missile here. Again, let's put Vorazun in B. Zagara, where do we have him? Zagara, don't use Scourge Queen. Don't use the first prestige. Use the third one so that you can at least chip in for uh, with uh, your Hunter Killers and Bailing Barrage to kill buildings. You can clear a lot of areas. Uh, she's terrible against Missile Command because she doesn't have anything. Scourge will fly around and kill random unimportant random missiles. missiles. Yeah, or yeah, not random uh, missiles. Or even worse, not even reach the missile. They'll they'll, they'll just kind of chase endlessly until they fly over an enemy static defense and then get destroyed for nothing. <laughs> or or like you have file launchers against nukes but if you miss if you can't aim them then you you're gonna get nuked uh corruptors don't do anything hunter killers don't do much so it's really bad against missile command it's pretty bad uh yeah i put her in d d okay because she can clear a little better yeah than artanis how about you evil zgara i have her from e to f pretty much yeah she sucks at this map sucks at missile command uh um kind of yeah kind of sucks at boom bots too so uh yeah she has nothing going for her uh p3 is is your best bet if you're gonna if you insist on playing with her but i'm gonna see i know i'm gonna see a lot of p1 zagara players on pub queue so e to f is <laughs> kind of sad so not d okay not d you're gonna have to convince me hard to go to d she's really bad i'd rather use artanis than her you'd rather use artanis hmm. even if even if zagara used the third prestige to deep sun all around the map and clear the buildings still worse than artanis yeah. okay because too, too. with artanis i artanis i can just make a observer or a phoenix slide it into the corner put down warp field and um, have a bunch of zealots go, go, go nuts on the area. Zagara is faster though, bailing barrage and the and hunter killers. And it's free. You don't spend extra resources killing things. You're, you're, so whatever resources you have are spent on defense or, what, or economy or whatever. You're just using the hero unit and the free things that she has to clear the map. I think it's yeah. more effective than... it's. So the reason why I put her in D instead of E is the clearing. The, the, the fact that she can clear and also she can spread overlords early on. Like before Artanis can get observers, she can spread overlords. So similar uh, function if you really wanted to do that. Yeah, I still... like You clear everything, Missile Command is still a thing. And you're, you're going to start losing stuff in your base. 
I mean, you can build a whole bunch of more of evil chambers to make extra targets. But Artanis, like, if something is going to, I mean, if he's using shield overcharge regularly, that and that helps mitigate a lot of a lot of stuff coming into your building. So it kind of prolongs it further. If you're using and if you're not using P3, um, then it, it's like both you and your ally benefit from it. If you're not using P3, you also have um, you have a guardian shell, which I mean, for what it's worth, it will save your probes from a nuke. <laughs> that is something. But yeah, I thought we... so. Despite that, Artanis is E. <laughs> yeah, that's why Zagara. I have E to F. Artanis, I had from D to E. Uh huh. So that's my reasoning. Okay. What do you think, Tutu? I wouldn't put her in F just because she helps a little. So I'll put her in E. Okay. So okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> there's a there's an empty there's an empty space in D. <laughs> <laughs> no one's there. They're just that much worse than everyone else. <laughs> they are. How about? I mean, that's that. How about we put uh, just don't play this mutation on D tier, and then somehow playing the mutation with Artanis and Zagara are worse than not playing at all. <laughs> oh my goodness! I like that. I like that. <laughs> You know, you you used the Haka instead of Zagara, and that's why it was so much easier. Because if you had used yes. Zagara, it would have been so much harder. I know, I know, I, yeah. I agree, I agree. Tutu would have been really crying. I I I, I know the Haka has better speed speed running options than Zagara does, for this map at least. That's why I I didn't even consider speed running. That wasn't even. But when you did, <laughs> I was like, okay, cool, that's great. But I didn't even consider it, and it's just like I knew the hawk would be much better. I mean, I kind of had to, to be fair, because I didn't make creeper hosts because like those those cost too much gas, and I was kind of going for mi more guardians than creeper. Also, my uh, my uh, pearl basket snipe. So that's also a thing. Anyway, that's not relevant anymore. Let's move on. Zertul, where do we have him? Strong, but he doesn't have that many ways of dealing with, with nukes. So uh, Zertul is always, he's never going to be super, super low, but I don't know if he's in the A position. So I have him from B to C. Really? Hot shield guards um, are pretty in good. In terms of... Really? Shield guards and <laughs> monoliths are pretty good. I'm but... so surprised. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. The mass shield guard strategy is a way, but... Again, are you are you saying he's a compared to uh, like uh, say Abathur, Alarak, Octurus? No. I I don't know if I I feel that. I mean, I'm I'm open to be convinced. Okay. Uh, how about you, Tutu? I don't think he's the same level as Artanis. Uh, not Artanis. Uh, Abathur, Alarak, <laughs> and them. He's not the same level okay. as Artanis. No one is except Zagara. Uh, I put wow. Zerto in S because I also think that if you do, like, there's hardly any detection, which means that once you get rid of the detectors, Zerto slashes the buildings to death. And he has the watchers, which provide tons of vision. His his buildings only get stronger. And at some point, you have three monoliths at each at each of your bases. You're going to zap all of the, the, the nukes before they do anything. And you can surround your base with shield guards. You don't need that many. You only need, like, four. If, if you want to be safe, you can put like eight because you're massing cannons or something. But you have like you have monoliths as well. So for for um, defense, I mean for for uh, map, you just mass cannons and you don't don't project the monoliths. So your monoliths are always on missile command duty. And yeah, so Zerato is good at the map. He's good against missile command. He's good against boombots. And I think if your ally just puts in numbers, he can do everything. Did you solo this so, stuff with Zerato? Uh, the guy I haven't tried it yet, but the guy who soloed this didn't even kill his own base he just patrolled workers workers like he he he, he trapped them like he trapped yeah. the boom bots yeah that, probes. that's kind of funny so what do you think evil is he s i'll defer to you guys i mean that's i mean if you uh, no, 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 no. defer to two two i, I had zertzel in a personally but it's, it's it's up to you yeah uh, if it's not unanimous I mean, I, okay if it's not unanimous, yeah, it's, it's not, not unanimous <laughs> I, I think I I feel more confident in Tychus than Zerato, but I mean, yeah. For again, you're talking to a person who uh, I haven't purchased Zerato, so I don't know. Oh, uh, first that experience. So that's something. So um, yeah, you're gonna defer to S. If Tutu says it's S, okay, I'll go with that. Okay, let's put Zerato in S. Again, I personally have an A, but both of them said S, so let's put him in S. So who is top of S? Tychus. Tychus, clearly. Tychus. All right, who's top of A? Oh man. <laughs> 
too many options. There's so many options. Um, I would say the the Manx should be top of S. Yeah, not top of S, I agree. Top a, because I agree. he can clear pretty well, and he has all the missile command stuff. Okay. Missile yep. command. Okay. Then Alarak. Alarak. Yep. Oh yeah. Similar. Oh yeah. This is what Stixman yeah. has been fighting for all along. Alarak can just stand in the in the ship launching spot and just kind of do it, do everything on his own. <laughs> Okay, next. Mm -hmm. Who's third in A? Carax, I think. Uh, or Stukov. Mm, Stukov is definitely easier. He's a lot slower with clearing. Yeah. Uh, Carax but, has observers. Yeah. And he can do Dead of Night stuff with his Solar Lance. Oh yeah, that's true. We could call it a tie between mm -hmm. them. If, if, they do, if they do different things equally good, they can be a tie. Not a big deal. Uh, yeah. I th would would his Rainer be better than both of them? No. Well, Rainer doesn't clear, huh? Well, Rainer is more just difficult in general, just just yeah. the mechanics. So like Stukov is brain dead. And... That's true. So... <laughs> Get it? Brain dead Stukov because he's a zombie. <laughs> yeah. Carax is not as brain dead, but he's definitely easier. And then to pull off Rainer is just it's just Carax is easier. <laughs> okay. All right. So Carax, Stukov, Rainer. Who's next? Yeah. Swan. Oh yeah, definitely Swan. Swan, Swan and then below Avatar. Rainer or Swan above Swan Rainer. At, mm, oh, I'd say Swan. Mm, actually, let's put Swan above Rainer. Okay. All right, and then yeah. Nova. I put Avatar at the bottom. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Same. Avatar at the bottom. Avatar's not F tier. <laughs> Just kidding. Who's top of B? Stepman, then Kerrigan. That boy, then Kerrigan. His right. satellites are so good. Yes, they are. Mm, I'll put Stepman, Han and Horner, then Kerrigan. Han and Horner, then Kerrigan. Uh... Oh, because they're Terrans? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You, you, you keyed on it. Perfect. Okay. And then yeah. Vorzun at the bottom of B. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would say Vorzun above Kerrigan. Vorzun isn't Terran. Yeah, but she has better hit scan. That's true. Though. Oh, yeah. Okay. She has a set and forget kind of defense. Yes. That makes sense. Okay. Who's top of C? The Haka? Wait. Well, huh. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not sure about this one. I'm okay I'm with a tie. sure either. If we could, if, if we could yeah, decide... Just, C and tie. E are just ties. All right, C and E, e they're both tie. equally as bad as each other. All right, that makes sense. Okay, guys, uh, watch Tutu's channel. Oh, wait, before that, how many guys? We only have like eight guys below A tier. Is it worth <laughs> asking for if any the combination of them would be better than Zeratul or nah? <laughs> well, Statman plus... Yeah, I think nah. <laughs> <laughs> Zeratul's nah. better than any combination of them. All right, there we go. Mm -hmm. Guys, watch Susu's channel. I will like a double. I will see you guys next time.